Good evening. Uh, I don't have a nice presentation or a movie to show you. And um, I excuse myself already now because I should have left like five minutes ago. So I will be brief and uh, I will leave uh, after the questions. Uh, just uh, it is not because I, I, I feel a, a grasp or something by questions, <laughs> but I will take questions. So um, what, uh, what I wanted to tell you tonight, um, I agree with mostly everything that you just said, and I think that Luxembourg is um, somewhere in the, in the early stages uh, of, uh, of a change. Uh, I remember when I came back from university, uh, from Paris and, and Hamburg, um, I arrived here with my bike, and I felt uh, really alone on the streets of Luxembourg City with my bike, and there was not that much infrastructure. Uh, since then, even though maybe, and I understand that, because I, I drive my back, uh, I ride my back every day as well, so uh, there is a lot to be done. Uh, a lot has happened already in the last uh, 10, 10 years. Um, just uh, maybe a few numbers. When you see uh, the numbers um, uh, of the, the kilometers of the infrastructure, uh, we have um, built uh, or opened, etc. Some hundred kilometers of biking infrastructure in these ten years. Um, we have these. Uh, you, you talked about plans that you have to have. So um, in 2007, we had the first, not mobility plan, but bicycle plan from the uh, German bureau, the, the PGV Studio. Um, it was uh, redone in 2011, and <clears throat> it was based on that that we started to. Uh, have some uh, to start to build infrastructure or open streets. So we have now uh, in all the, the the different parts of the city we have zone uh, 30 um, parts. We have uh, also to measure because I also think that it's really important to know what is going on. So we have 12 counters uh, underneath the um, uh, under under earth to to count the evolution of the biking in the city and. Uh, last year was the first year that we passed the 1 million um, passages of bikes on these 12, uh, on these 12 uh, counting points. I have very, very new numbers from today about our model split because <clears throat> before uh, or in 2006 uh, no one actually wanted to do a, a model split counting on biking in Luxembourg because it was like zero one percent or something like that. Um, and um, this year we thought when we see the evolution of biking on these different uh, counting points, we thought that it was maybe a good idea to for the first time really ask people how they drive around or ride around. And I must say it is uh, quite promising because 15% um, of people, that's one of the numbers, 15% of the people uh, living in the city and working in the city to take their bike two to three times a week at last, at least. So I think that's quite promising when you see where you come from. And um, I know that we are heading somewhere else as well, because I know that not only we have lots of cars, we have 93% of the same people that were asked that do have a car in the city. So it's the, the numbers that you showed regarding the car ownership, they are absolutely correct. The model split is changing because 50% of these people only use their car for, not even 50% use their car uh, for their working uh, travel. And I absolutely agree that it is not um, our mission to, to play one mobility um, uh, mode against another one because that's not how you uh, how you bring things forward. But um, we, we actually, uh, set on, on, on different um, uh, parts. First, the infrastructure. I, I told you we, we, we did some things, and some things are uh, being done right now, which uh, uh, is uh, maybe a little bit complicated um, for everyone. Um, and um, a lot of campaigning as well, so promoting the bike. So that was the only thing I was not so convinced is the, um, the thing, or maybe we have to work on that then. The thing that um, we just say bike and then we, you do something for the environment. Uh, we just had discussions about our uh, new development plan, the PRG, uh, here in Luxembourg uh, City, and um, 
the, what what everyone knows is that we have we don't have only 110,000 inhabitants. We have we double during the day. So during the day we are far over 200,000. We have all these people coming in the city, and that's uh, the, the major part that we have to do is um, to change the mobility ways of people coming in the city. How can you come in the city? You don't have to come by car. Um, because the, um, the, the, the model split of 50-50 uh, that we see for people living in the city um, becomes totally different uh, as far as you just cross the border of the city. So then you easily uh, have 80% of the people taking their car uh, to drive around. So that's um, our major thing that we have to do. And that's one, one of the reasons why we, or the main reason actually why, we are actually now building the tram. Um, the tram is uh, something that is going to be very important. The tramway is something to, that is going to be very important for the city, not only uh, for the traffic in general, but also because we uh, profit from these constru construction works uh, to have bike paths all along the way. So the ones of you that uh, drive uh, on Kirchberg uh, on a regular basis, they, <laughs> they must uh, know that uh, actually right now the situation is really complicated but uh, the plans that have been um, uh, worked on by the, the ministry uh, they are really great uh, afterwards when you continue on the red bridge you will have a perfect uh, passage on the red bridge the same when you go further on because that's where we stand now in planification to the um, uh, to the Place des Toiles uh, you will have a separated and good and nice and, and safe bikeway as well to go up to there. So things are being done, but it takes time. Um, I think that mentalities are changing, but that takes time as well. But we are working on it. We are not capitulating or something. We, uh, we believe that uh, change is possible, not only for the, uh, for the environment, but uh, for personal health, for people being happy to drive around, to ride around uh, uh, on their bike. That's what uh, personally uh, motivates me every day to take my bike because I feel free on my bike. Um, and uh, so we have uh, other plans. We, you know, maybe that we are working on a passage from, uh, from the Red Bridge to, uh, to the elevator that is opening soon. The elevator that will, um, uh, will bring you from Parfumdal uh, upstairs to the city center. Uh, you have the Pont Adolf, that's a project from the, the, the ministry. The Pont Adolf uh, will uh, have a better connection to, from the city to the central station. And we are working on plans also combined with the tram uh, for Avenue La Liberté that will have a good connection uh, from uh, the Pont Adolf to the central station as well, also on separated bike lanes. So that's for my brief part. Um, I thank you very much for listening to me and I must say that I really think, and I totally agree on that, that it's um, with initiatives like this, showing that uh, the bike has a part to play and that there are people that want um, more infrastructure and uh, that show the bike in the streets that we can all together bring it uh, forward. So thank you very much. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Hello, my name is Sibathe. I started I started cycling in the street just recently and some of the crossings seem like puzzles with no solution. It seems like uh, like you have plugged around certain connections that are provision in advance, like you have road, you go from the center to the house, but if you want to go somewhere else, it doesn't seem to be any clear solution, so is there anyone or any place where you can submit these puzzles? No, no, we have a, we have a whole bike plan that you can find on the, the, the internet side of the city, where you find all the maps. Uh, we have, it's 
I, I agree with you that it's not always easy if you don't know where you have to go, but once you know where you have to go, uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, bad. And we have a person in charge of mobility dues uh, in, uh, in the city, so uh, if you have questions or suggestions, you can al al always uh, email her and, uh, or ask her what, uh, about uh, what bothers you. I'm asking you as a citizen, fellow cyclist and person, um, two things. What are, in your opinion, your barriers you see in everyday cycling? So what's really like you're saying, oh, this is weird, we have got to change that. And the second thing, if one of us sees that kind of barrier, what level should we aim for to be doing? Locally, on a national level, what, what is the best approach? Because Sometimes one has the feeling that it's only a, oh, that's a good idea, but it stays at that. Well, I think it, it depends on the barrier that you, that you encounter. Uh, what personally really um, upsets me the most is my usual daily travel is from here to, um, to city centers. From, I live here in Bolivar. Um, and I ride every day on the, um, the, the, the Boulevard Roosevelt, where we have this separate bike lane, bike lane and where um, cars park or uh, deliveries are made, even though there is a delivery place just 50 meters away that is free. Uh, so I think it's a lot about respect. And um, that's why we had a campaign last year about how to respect each other and we will reissue uh, something even more uh, profound next year. Um, because the bike has not um, is not um, already consi uh, considered by everyone for being there, and that's why the mass makes makes a lot of it. So if, if you have many people on the bike, then people then the cars or whoever will pay more attention. Um, the, the the second question it really depends on on what uh, kind of barriers uh, you you encounter when. Uh, I get uh, the information on Twitter that uh, there's a sign that uh, is hidden by a tree. <laughs> I can may have it may go away. Uh, if it's something more, uh, I don't know, like you say, I want a, a separated bike lane on the street where we don't have the space to do it, it gets more complicated. But I think it, all, on, uh, it always depends on what we're talking about. Um, my, my contribution is less of a question, but maybe more of a plea, along the lines uh, also made by, by previous speakers. I think um, since I got involved with people interested in urban cycling, it's been about three or four years, I've seldom met a group of people who are more logically inclined, uh, less dogmatic and, 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 and more creative than this. So um, I think you have a resource here for the city which is invaluable. And instead of asking us to contact one of you, I think you should consider making use of that resource. I understand there's a council of uh, public transport users somewhere within the city's um, uh, institutions. I think a council like that should be set up for, um, uh, for, for, for cyclists as well. Um, I really think um, that the way of transforming this shouldn't be uh, a one-to-one -one game between the electorate and, and, and the public institutions. Uh, it should be uh, a move together into that direction. And I would very much appreciate if the contact and the communication channels with us would be extended over time. No problem. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm here for that. Um, and actually, I also wanted to tell you that as I will not attend uh, to all, all of your working groups over the weekend, when you're done, um, I suggest that we meet and uh, you, you tell me what, is, what are the results of uh, your working groups and uh, to see what we can do with it. Uh, for the rest, we have uh, a committee de suivi vélo in the city, uh, where none of your group now is represented, but uh, we can always talk about that. And we have, of course, of course a mobility commission as well in, in, in the city. So um, there, there are exchanges, but maybe not now with this group of people, but 
that can of course be changed. Um, we did have a larger, uh, a rather large issue last year in Ash, where a car was parked on the cycle lane, and when we called the police, the police refused to um, take away the car. <laughs> like they said, well, we're going to give him uh, a ticket, and he will have to pay, but we're not going to tow it away. And I don't understand that because. I mean, if you were to park your bicycle on the highway, they would actually tow it away, right? And this is, in, in these kinds of situations, you can see that the police does not necessarily um, have the same view about things than the politicians maybe have. It's the same thing for the, the guy who got taken into custody because he was not showing his ticket on the train. I mean, it's just a ticket. And the train is always late, so he didn't have his <laughs> It's kind of compensation, you mean, or? Yeah, I mean, I already uh, contacted Mr. Bausch about um, having a free ride if the train is late for more than three minutes, but I did not get an answer. <laughs> <laughs> three minutes is very severe, but... Yeah. Um... I know, I mean, it was... I have my speech, of, like, in, in about ten minutes, I think, about open data, where I'm going to get into that more, but... Um, there was a, an article lately in Word, uh, I think, about uh, trains being 90% on time, but um, we don't have the data about that, which is how they present the train. And Me it neither. doesn't mean you know, <laughs> a, a thing. It's, it's just useless information. Okay. So. No, but you're right. I mean, uh, if, uh, if you have rules and rules are not respected, and if the police says, well, yeah. okay, uh, it doesn't help a lot. So I, I agree with you. There's two more questions. No, just go ahead. I'm, I'm late anyway, so... <laughs> yes, um, I, I wanted to ask you what the plan is for the plan that you outlined uh, between the Gauss and Kirchberg. And, and I also just started cycling recently uh, in Luxembourg and it's very confusing and sometimes you have to go on sidewalks and sometimes you don't. And I wanted to know if this was going to be eliminated or changed? No, well, the thing is, um, the, the new planning that we are doing, of course, it's going to be uh, separated by planes, uh, not mixed with pedestrians and not on the street. But the situation being as it is, um, we have, we have uh, on, on different streets issues to, to do it right away that way. But everything that is planned new is going to be really the way as it has to be. Uh, for the timeline, um, uh, Kirchberg is um, the tram um, is going to be uh, ready at the end of 2017. So that's at that time, at the latest, the Kirchberg will also be on, on one side, the side of the tram. Uh, the, the bike lane will be good and nice and uh, all the way through. Um, the same for the red bridge. And uh, I'm always like, talking on one side. Then um, to Lippertsberg, um, down, uh, it's going to take a little bit more, but we're talking months. Um, and the timeline for coming to Central Station is 2019, approximately. So that's plan, plan basis right now. So. Just another question, how are you going to uh, combine the bus and the, and the bikes? Um, I've been told it's it's on the discretion of the bus driver? That no, it's not really only the discretion of the bus driver, it depends on the, the space in the bus. So if the bus is full, there you, you cannot take the, 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 the bike in the bus, but if there's place in the bus, you have a right to take the bike in the bus. And for the regional train, buses as well? The regional buses? Yes. I'm not in charge of the regional buses, so uh, I cannot <laughs> tell you what is the, the case for the, for the city buses, but that's, that's the... That's how it is. For the regional buses, there's a nice hack because usually they actually have these huge um, Lux luggage uh, cases. And usually I just open them because they're open anyway. <laughs> then they storm out and say, you can't do that. And I say, oh, but there's space for my bike. Put it in and then, oh yeah, you're right. Um, so, and that works so, quite well. Yeah, and then they have to take you somewhere. So. There was a lot of space because like, no, no bikes allowed. <laughs> yeah. But they have to take you. By law, they have to take you if there is space, I suppose. Okay, I think it's the same rule for the regional buses, yeah. but I, I'm not 100% sure, so I prefer not to. But I think this is quite a good solution. <laughs>
I wanted to ask something about the cashback other than the Avenue Kennedy. Yes. Is the city of Luxembourg in charge or is it the fund cashback? It's a very complicated <laughs> 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 should have another committee to work on that. No, no, no. The thing is, um, the it's and it's not only the situation for the Fondue Cashback, it's the situation for all the streets. The streets that are state streets. So we try to work it out together, but uh, <laughs> uh, right now this is working quite well because we go into the same direction. Um, uh, the thing is, the the, the Fondue Cashback actually does the planning for the for the Cashback, and but we have to agree. So that's the, that's how it works. And I think definitely you should ask people who walk and cycle in this area because the pedestrian situation in Kirchberg is terrible. Yeah, right now you get off from a bus and you have to go like this. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's not, we don't even have to talk about it because I I quite often have to go to Kirchberg just to, to go to the, to, the, to the ministry for example and uh, it's it, well no there's, it's really not good I agree, but we have to, it's one year, and then it will be way better. But uh, I asked you for the patience. <laughs> I have one constructive question. Yeah, sure. Aren't you afraid with the questions coming in now, based on the progress that's been made so far, is that in the next plan, are you sure you're not making the same kind of mistakes? I don't, I'm not sure I understand you. Well, what I, when I hear, what I hear, this is my, these are my yeah, sure, sure, you don't have a situation. Uh, I recognize them. And I recognize them as symptomatic of trying to make small steps because they're hard, but by making, cho by making choices that you need to fix the next year. No, no, no. Right now, it has been done a little bit like that, but right now, we are really on really big projects. So okay. we're not talking a little bit of here and a little bit of no. there, but we're talking about big, so work, big works yeah. um, that are really going to put the cyclists into a way better situation. Do you think you have the right framework for that then? The right what? Framework. Oh. It's template. Do you think you have? Because it's yeah. so interconnected, all no, these issues. Sure, I, yeah. I, I, and we, we, it's work in progress, even that. Sure. I mean, it's sure. not something you don't say, we once charged some, someone to, to do something for us and now we know how it works. Right now we are working together with, because it's not only a Luxembourg city situation, that's quite specific for our city, country, etc. Uh, we, um, we are working in the DG uh, region, that's the city with several of the, 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 the localities that are around the city um, on a bicycle plan because it's really important, as I told you before, what really astonished me was that if you see the model split in the city, it's it's okay, it's not great or something, it's not Amsterdam, it's not Copenhagen, but it's way, way, way better than it was 10, 15 years ago. But as soon as you step um, to outside of the city, it gets really different. So um, I think we have we have also something to do there to attract more people from parts that are really not far away that you can do on a bike, on an e-bike or on a normal bike. And uh, so there's that's work in progress. And they are actually looking at the whole situation throughout the whole city with the the, 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 the locality around. Also, I mean, uh, the Dutch only created a bicycle plan in 1999. Can you imagine that? The first national bicycle <laughs> plan? Yeah. There are a lot of myths around. But um, they changed it 10 years later to a mobility plan because they realized that to step over all the biggest uh, challenges was to look at the entire picture. And no matter how difficult the initial cooperation between entities was, it was worth the effort to come up with a mobility plan that was inclusive. That's why I pointed out the and, and, and philosophy. Because if you just look at the bicycle plan, a philosophy of just looking at the bicycle, trying to connect it with different other modes in a different way, um, then you soon uh, hit barriers. You sooner hit barriers than you would otherwise take the longer route of working together for the mobility plan. It's a different approach. That's why I'm curious whether you. Well, actually, the plans in the city were not uh, to connect the bike with other 
um, mobility no, modes. It was, it, modes. No, 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 but it was to actually offer a, a real, just a bike possibility throughout the city, which did not exist at all. I, I don't know if you are aware of what yeah, we're talking no. about, because um, in 2000, uh, in, in the years 2000, there was, there was like, the only, one of the only bike infrastructures that there were is the one, and that's like the worst case uh, example in, in the city, is the one that is going down here um, on this street. So that was one of the only bike lanes that existed in 2000. And um, it's still there because if once you have one, you will not take it away, but I don't like it at all because it's not nice. Yeah. So uh, that's why we, we, we offered an, a, second, a secondary itinerary uh, on another street and we introduced um, the bike lane on the Pont Buchelot, separate bike lane, mm -hmm. this year. So okay. that's... Uh, well, maybe I, I didn't convey myself very very well. Mm -hmm. uh, what I essentially mean is that what we learned is that if you treat it like a complete mobility plan, then you address the other modes in relation to biking yes. completely different because you assess the other mo modalities in a completely different light, the same way that in June, just this month, the city discovered for the first time, they researched and they discovered how much traffic was unnecessary. Just that data just made them, gave them a sea change in policy plan. Of course, but what I meant is that um, if you have nothing, you, it's maybe better to start with the view of the bike. That was the start. And because um, the, the city was planned for the, for the cars over the yeah. last decades. It's so, an intervention. No, 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 no. <laughs> and the thing is, okay, yeah. so now you, do, you, you, you take the perspective of the mm -hmm. bike. We did the same with the pedestrians. Mm -hmm. We, will, we, we uh, elaborated the pedestrian <laughs> plan, which will also have an impact on the bike, but well, I did not go into that. But um, and I, I totally agree, in a few years' time, we, we will have to do that. But and I'm right. still convinced that that was something right that uh, uh, that was done to start with a uh, bike plane. No, yeah, we, 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 we've come there. to the same point. Yeah. It was just about me trying to sense whether the city is is aware of that opportunity. That's, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I think there's, there's so many uh, opportunities. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.